way to Bellew the week, so let's get on it then. Uh, someone was asking earlier about Tony Bellew. We haven't you know, gone in on Tony in a while, so maybe it's chance uh, our chance here in episode 481 to rectify exactly that. You and this boxing sound, whatever you're called, right? You see you. You must be the most bored man on planet Earth, because what you do is you sit and talk about what the fuck I do. Remember this, right? What you talk about, I do. I do it. You talk about it. I do it. So that gives me the right to say whatever I want about what I do. It doesn't give you the right because you don't do it. Now, if you show me a video of you doing it and doing it at the level I do it at, then maybe you can have a say. But remember this. I fight. You watch. It's that simple. All it's about. I fight, you watch. No one gives a shit about what you say or what you do. But you give a shit about me because I fight. I don't watch. As simple as that. Your podcast isn't worth a carrot. I don't give a shit what you say, what you do. If you've got something to say to me, I'm not hard to find. I'm usually on the front row of boxing events. Come and say hello, or come and say to me what you'd say to me on your daft podcast. But remember this, I get more views with a fart than what you get with a two-hour podcast. On that note... (laughs) (laughs) Every time. (laughs) Love it. I love the way he goes there. What's he say to the side? He was like, you must be the saddest man on the planet. Because you talk about what I do. No, mate, sorry. The saddest men on the planet are the ones who talk about us talking about what you do. <laughs> they're, they're really fucking sad. No. Aim it at them. The, the, sad, the saddest man on the planet is his husband. Uh. <laughs> usually, for, usually front row at boxing events. I friggin' hell, Tony. He definitely is front row at boxing events. You can't get rid of the fella. He'll be there this weekend, Tony. We always like, we always like playing that one. Um, takes me back, Andy. Actually, somebody put up the infamous Scott Quigg Frampton weigh-in video. Do you remember Tommy? You, me, oh, aye. Tommy Senior. Someone tweeted it out, didn't they? Aye. In the week was, uh, was that last week? Was it? Uh, during the week, mate. Aye. Uh, said, how long ago was that? That's well, it's, it's seven years, years? now. It's over over, over seven years. Two thousand. Yeah. Was it fifteen? Sixteen. I tell you, that was that was a mission that day. I remember we were up at. Up at the airport at five in the morning, eh? Fucking hell! It was the way in. Was it one, two in the afternoon? I think it was. Uh, the Irish managed to fix us up for it, no problem, eh? And uh, Big Tyson was there. I think Joe Gallagher was about mid that day as well. I don't know what was wrong with him. Um, Andy Lee, quick good chat with him. I had good times, good laugh. The comments. Oh, I, I, I felt, I felt, I felt, felt like death during the fight, though, mate. I was like hung over, like you would not <laughs> believe, man. Fucking, I always do it. First night off the leash, I just go fucking mental, you know. So, uh, it was a good laugh. Yeah, the comments under that IFL video are worth a watch. One day we'll have to go through them and, have, and uh, I'll read them out to you. They are quite funny. But anyway, let's go on to Bellew of the Week. Thank you very much for that, Tony, for that uh, that introduction. You don't want to be popping up on any more IFL videos. You won't be able to fly to the US. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> like Rick Graveal. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen Rick Reveal tonight, actually. I hope he's all right. I think he's banned on Twitter again, mate, I noticed, I think. Oh, is he? He's going to come aye. back as Rick257341. How many phones aye. has he got? More phones than BT, him. I don't know, mate. He must be using a VPN or some sort. He must be with a country, a country in and setting it all up. So he must be with Afghanistan or something like that. He's creating, I <laughs> well, if, if the fucking allegations are true, he's using EncroChat. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they've got all these conversations in, haven't they? Uh, good old Rick. Imagine, Imagine the poor fucker tasked with going through his phone. <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> Hope you're not queasy, well, First day on the job, is it? Like training day. Hope you're not queasy. Get this piece of shit. Training therapy sessions after the first day on the job. <laughs> what the fuck? There he is now. So he is. Look at Jim McDonald's. Holy shit. <laughs> look at that KO percentage, yo, mate. That's what it's all about. 65%. That's Jim there. That's Jim McDonald, so it is. 
<laughs> Loving it, Matty. Niche cultural reference there. Good stuff. Well, you know, I follow <laughs> the guy in the chat. I can put it together from there. <laughs> Shout out to Jim. Anyway, the first one here, Martin Hurry nominated this one alongside many other people. ESPN ringside. AJ was shocked when he lost to Usyk in their first fight. I swear I thought I was beating Alexander Usyk. I thought I was looking like Muhammad Ali in there. I didn't get any impression I was losing. That's why when they announced his name, I was kind of like, huh? What do you... <laughs> Fuck off, man. Yes, yes, pish. He was literally in the corner, breathing through his arse, sitting down after that fight finished. Muhammad Ali would never, would never have done that. He'd be dancing about the ring, fucking getting a big large if he won the fucking fight. Oh, I don't know. It, it is. It's fucking boring, man, isn't it? It's what's yeah. going on with this fucking. Set? Is it a value of the week word he's mentioned Freddie here like that? He's announced the fucking lifetime does own partnership with Joshua. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Saudis on the right to the fucking Usyk fight. What's going to be? Fuck, what are the zone subscriptions going to look like if he gets beat again by Usyk and the Saudis have fucking had it on Sky? Oh my God. That goes back to Desi's comment about Joe Parker going to Sky and that every fucker's scrambling to try and get a head fight array and they've got nothing. So what they're going to do is they're going to fucking split it all between them, right? You know, imagine Sky winning this fight. Can you imagine Eddie having to go back and fucking speak to Adam Smith? <laughs> ben Shalom get involved. <laughs> e Shalom. <laughs> Great guy. Sure, negotiations will be easy with Ben Shalom. Great guy. <laughs> Adam Hughes says Muhammad Ali post death. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking, maybe he's talking about the Berbick version of Ali, possibly. He could have said know. he could have said the Olympic what? version of Ali, but not the one where he won the gold medal. Aye, the one, one that won a lot of Aye, that <laughs> one. Oh, he certainly got staggered like that anyway, that late day, mm. that last round. <laughs> a good old AJ. He might appear later on, he might not. Um, Tommy Fury has revealed that he's been denied entry to the US for the Jake Paul press conference, putting their fight in major doubt. Sean says... Why would a Homeland Security agent be at Heathrow? Why would you go to the airport without an Esther? And why is he not using the visa he used to go with his bird last month? Flapped it big time. You know what? That's a good body of work from Sean there, isn't it? He's solid. Like... <laughs> solid internet slutery there. Um, the big the big giveaway was when Big John whew, uh, said that uh, we can't mate. come to America, mate. Uh, so we'll have to fight you in England, Jake Paul. And then two days later, Tommy shows up with a camera crew to go and get turned away from a flight. It's funny, mm. eh? Why, why is Tommy Fury the only one on that entire list, right, that's been photographed at fucking at an airport trying to get through passport control? Why is Tyson Fury and other people who've been mixing with MTK, etc., not getting spotted, taking photographs, getting sent to the papers? See, here's the thing, right? You're not going to sell Tommy Fury as a fighter, right? I'm sorry, like, you know, he, he was on the pod and everything before. We're big, big Tommy Fury supporters here at Box and Asylum. Um, we gave him a start practically before he went on Love Island. It was the biggest media outlet he's ever been on. Um, but like the fact that he's on Love Island and everything, and Molly May and his burden on it, they're worth so much money. He doesn't have to fight, so fucking just don't fight then. Like, but don't be selling us this fucking wolf ticket that you're going to be the YouTuber and you're actually running from the YouTuber. Like, give me a fucking break, pal. Come on, like. Uh, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you're gonna, if you're good enough to fucking be a, a champion, or you're good enough to be a professional pro boxer, you should be good enough to be fucking Jake Paul, man. Do you know what I mean? So if you're not good enough to be Jake Paul, just don't be a fighter. Go back on Love Island for another season, or do a reality show with Molly May, or do something else. Like nobody will care, honestly. Um, but just stop. Like I was even kind of like partly disappointed that this fight is not going ahead. So I was looking forward to the circus that it brings. But, you know, don't worry because the Zone's first pay-per-view fight in the UK is going to be KSI versus somebody. So, you know what I mean? Game More change, baby. There you see. Come, you know, fights for you, Tommy Fury. Maybe Tommy will have to stick to advertising the meat patches. Do you remember that, Rob? When he was adv you don't have to eat a sausage again. You can just put a meat patch on your arm. Meat patches. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I hope it wasn't fucking boring me. It could have been fucking <laughs> <laughs> sketchy. Oh, good old Tommy. Oh, somebody texted me. Who's that? Who cares? We'll find out later. Let's move on. Uh, Dan oh, Frost, yeah. Usyk doesn't have a clue what he's on about here. I didn't get the video, unfortunately, but Ganesh says Big L for Frost here. What, what was he doing, Andy, man? When <laughs> Usyk's hair isn't the stupidest thing in the video, what was he going on about the 80,000 to Usyk, man? Yeah, but he said it twice. He's like, oh, excuse me, what? What's he saying? <laughs> Frost is trying to get two. I think the mileage out of that, out of that saying is really done now, but there's, that adds to your content at least so I think there's a, still a wee bit of, of mileage left in it yes Carol keep it coming 
It's good. It's kind of like it's like the in betweeners. It was funny fucking ten years ago, but we're over it now. You know, if you saw it yeah. again, now you'd be like, eh. no, that way. A good old call. Um, we've got here Spaceman. My nominee. That poster is great. Rubes. Nobody in twenty twenty four. Eddie Hearn in twenty twenty four. Watches or has two or three fights left. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Hawking. <laughs> I think it's the you're a fucking bomb. You're a fucking asshole. We hope you fucking die. I hope you fucking die. <laughs> <laughs> See, the thing is, he's got this fucking grey beard or whatever it is and the grey hair. No, no, the kind of gold colour, so no grey. Fucking that kind of golden bronze, whatever it is he's got. It makes him look like he's fucking 90. <laughs> Looks like one of those kind of like you know one of those kind of African village elders type people, you know. He's just a fucking robbing about him, man. He'd be quite the part. <laughs> I don't think he's be expelling any knowledge anytime soon, though. To be honest with you, <laughs> good old War. Gonna War. make it really tough to run from the squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> Foot down. Uh, pen for pen boxing show linked with Kel Book. Book retires. Linked with Amir Khan. Khan retires. Linked with Mikey Garcia. Mikey Garcia retires, ladies and gentlemen. And Connor Ben. <laughs> He's retiring more fellas permanently than B Hop, a prime B Hop, but he does doesn't find any of them. It's fucking amazing. It's even better. So I think what we can take from this one, Rob and Steve and Matty, is I think Aiden Brunner might retire next Bill looks here. <laughs> he's a solid candidate, Andy. He is a very solid candidate for retirement. I see a picture of him getting posted up there. I think it was, it was an IG, I think it was. And he looked like the epiphany of how washed should look like, by the way. Right? Sure. you got to think, though, Andy. He's under pressure. He's probably a grandparent. He has that many kids. He's probably a granddad already. <laughs> With a great granddad for all weekend, yeah. mate. With, with the end of Roe v. Wade, this guy's going to be fighting until at least 2040. Let's be honest. <laughs> I tell you, I. He, he, I would not be surprised if this fight does get made. Broner against Ben, for example. But um, honestly, fuck, I, I just can't wait. For his One next of the fight, most actually. fucking exciting fights there is to make. Would that not be the most exciting fight Conor Ben's ever been in? If he was the fight Broner? Broner, I don't know, mate. But Broner, you just don't know what you get for Broner. I mean, the thing is, you get for Broner this day, day and age, is you know he's got a chin, but yeah. He's... That's about it. He's got a chin, a belly, a fucking uh... beard, everything. But I think that's an exciting <laughs> fight. I, I and an overdraft. Fight. How funny would it be if Adrian Broner's redemption came by knocking out fucking Conor Ben? <laughs> Unbelievable, <laughs> isn't it? Oh, fucking hell, I'd be gutted, mate, if that was to happen. You'd be I on the like, IV train, Andy. No, no, I'd be. No, I'd want Ben to beat him, like, because I've said, you know, I, I, I can't stand Broner, mate. He's fucking. I hate talent getting wasted. I hate to see talent piss it all away. Uh, and I've seen a few boys do it. He's one of them. Fucking knew it for the day dot man. He was he was he was full of shit. Fucking knew it. And everybody all fucking bought in it. But your uncle Andy here said, "Nah, no buying it." He's a fucking pant load. Always has been. Always will be. Fucking hood rat man. Deench says he's learning on the job, fellas. I don't know if he's talking about nine <laughs> Connor Ben or Terry Chisora. <laughs> Maybe Chisora's learning on the job. <laughs> oh man, brutal, brutal mente honesto. Here's one for you, Andy. A few people have tagged in waiting for your response. Who's this phone jack nine? You guys didn't like the last question, so I got a better one. Roberto Duran versus Ryan Garcia. <laughs> oh, close one. It's a close one, I think. Mate, I've got a look at my face. It looks like it's someone just, just, just farted, no claiming that, you know. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, yeah, we'll move on for that one. I, 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 what people want me to say, really? I mean, you're talking, you're talking about one of the greatest of all time against one of the greatest of all time bullshitters. So I'll leave it at that. As I say, gotta give King Ryan his due, though. By the way, he's he clapped back uh, with a bit of class at Canelo there, didn't he? Yeah, the week? Canelo, Canelo said, uh, "When I was twenty, I was world champion," and he was like, "Yeah, when he was twenty, he was world champion, but he fought for a vacant title against Matthew Hatton." <laughs> and, hey, I'm liking that from King Roy. <laughs> Pretty good from Crying Roy in that one. It, yeah, it, it's a good burn, man. But I'd, I'd be setting the line on him and uh, Roberto Duran in about 90 seconds. I swear to God, he he is a knockout waiting to happen. He leaves that chin dry, like he does. He hangs it out there, and it's going to be class, absolute class. The day that that fucking someone drops it on him, he's going to go. He is going to go, and. Uh, so he's, he's, he's part-time for me. He's just in it 
Like, mm. probably a bit like Mikey Garcia, but maybe no totally love, love with the sport, just in it for the money, but a, but a shagging and that as well. You know, he's got a few baby mamas <laughs> that we understand, you know. It's got, it's got it's for the money, part time fighter does a bit of shagging. What's the problem <laughs> at the moment, Daddy? <laughs> <Get them. laughs> nice work if you can get it. <laughs> Only fans like of the matches are boys. <laughs> It'll be interesting if he hangs out with Joe Goose and long enough to see if he can still get that much pussy while wearing a Hawaiian shirt. Only <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Joe can pull that shit off, man. But no, I was just like, Garcia's just too busy clout chasing, man. Whereas fucking. Garcia, uh, Duran just chased you about the ring and fucking clout the fuck out of you, so um, yeah, we will leave it at that. How many Jason. low blows do you think Duran would land on Garcia in the, on the first six? Where are the, where are the bookies drawing the line on that one, Matty? <laughs> <laughs> With the thumb in the eye, think, Matty. <laughs> I don't think he would need it, Rob. I'm uh, I, I'm pretty sure that uh, he'd be able to, to beat him with clean tactics. Um, Probably look a lot like Tyson Spinks, don't you think, Andy? What, 87 seconds? What was it? 87 seconds? 89 yeah. seconds? Um, I don't know if it goes that quick, to be honest with you. I think he'd be on his bike for a fair but, but again, Duran, when, when, when fucking savagely in the mood, made the weight properly, he was a fucking monster. Like, especially that way. As someone said in the chat, I said, what's not like about this fight, Andy? Well, I suppose, you know, Duran fucking absolutely taking the body on his record there. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that inside fighting. Fucking hell, man. That guy that could get pushed to the ropes, eye gouged, punched in the bollocks, and then fucking bo- body snatched on, on like fucking one combination of punches. He'd get lifted off the canvas with one of them shots to the body. Remember, do, do you remember? I don't know if you remember, but I remember the, the Ray Lampkin knockout, right? He fucking hurt him with his uppercut, dropped the guy like a fucking bag of cement on the fucking floor. Got interviewed after the fight, he says, he says he's only on his way to the hospital. That doesn't count. He says it only counts if he went to the morgue. <laughs> <laughs> imagine some, imagine coming out with a comment like that these days, man. People were going fucking woke. woke reminds, me that, reminds me of the Tyson one, wasn't it, against uh, Jose Rebalta? And I said to him, hey, my car with a fight, another fight by KO. Uh, how are you? I wanted to put his nose up into his brain with an uppercut. I was actually trying to drive his nose into his brain. <laughs> my bastard. Oh, Mike. Anyway, talking to chasing. Here's a man who spent his whole weekend chasing. After breaking up some people wanting selfies, the guard has got to ebbs. People oh, trying to have photos taken with ebbs. I bet, I bet you unbuttoned the shirt and everything, do you? <laughs> the guard wasn't having anything of it, Andy, but look, he got rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's off, lads. I've got a phoenix to see here. <laughs> Tell us about the tattoos. Again. Rising, baby. <laughs> look at her face. She's all happy to see him, do you? God, how are you doing? Look at the keychain on the jeans there, man. What, what dungeon does that look like? That's what you say, man. That's a Tower of London key, that one. That's I, don't know she's, uh, I don't know if she's happy to see him or she's leaning back like a, a prime Floyd Mayweather there in the shoulder all defence to try and fucking <laughs> evade any possible fucking Look at incoming. the camera, man, Rob. Over to the left. He knows what's coming. <laughs> he knows what's coming. He's after cutting a hole in the fucking advertising yoke there. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about the tattoos. We love a bit of gad. Uh, moving on. Uh, Joe Joyce with the well-known boxing phrase. If you go outside and it's raining and you don't have an umbrella, then you might get wet. <laughs> oh, classic, that one, isn't it? That's up there with fucking, if you want to rob a bank, you have to go in and get the money. That's a... <laughs> Factually correct uh, trash talk, Rob. It's the future. I like it. Joyce. Uh, CR Boxing. Just come across the TalkSport interview with Anthony Yard yesterday. Jim White telling him he should be getting rid of the 37-year-old Baturbiev and then move on to the big fights was a highlight. <laughs> Got to be a strong contender, says Boxing Squared. James Becker agrees. Yeah, well. just go out and fucking trash fucking Arthur Baturbiev like it's nothing and get give us the big fight that we all want to see, you versus Lyndon Arthur 3. Oh, man, Jim White, yeah. I can't believe these people get paychecks. I don't know, they do. From Pabellum. Well, allegedly. He's got a fucking brass neck, by the way. Jim White hasn't he given fucking still given boxing interviews when he fucking completely ducked the fucking MTK connection. Has not fucking ever mentioned it once on his given asking all the tough questions apart from that one, because he's a he's a great ad himself. Great bunch of lads. Oh and the Ebony Bridges thing actually, I just noticed they are just going through Twitter just trying to get up some of my uh, Bill of the Weeks. I noticed in the, she's put out a tweet there last night. Don't let your imagination run well, boys, as she gets her picture team with Porn Princess Ellie Brooke. 
So uh, I think Ricky Gravel, yeah, Ricky actually follows us. So, uh, Ricky's still kicking about with that same account. Lana Wolf as well, Rob. So uh, who knows what the <laughs> who knows what the guy was watching there last night? <laughs> like friends against humanity. That is so okay, hell. <laughs> I'm disappointed though, boys, to find out that the porn star fighter got canned, didn't it? Do you remember? Uh, it was what? Astrid Wet against someone else. They had a fight, and then apparently one of them threatened the other one's life, and so she withdrawn because she was scared for, for her life or something, Rob. <laughs> she was a bit Astrid dry after that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. She threatened her life. I'm glad I came out with that there just now. That was a good one, that. That was a good one. I didn't sign up to be in a snuff film. <laughs> a Daniel Armstrong nomination for Bunter in 15 minutes into the latest pod talking to Yusik he's talking to Yusik in the weirdest fucking voice Yusik has an interpreter you fucking ninny says uh, Daniel Armstrong there yeah apparently he's going all Steve McLaren Bunter trying to communicate with Yusik so um, good luck to him on that one and we've got a double header here oh Rob you mentioned this earlier actually I think it was a year. it was either you or Andy AJ signs for DAZN. Anthony Joshua's future fights will be broadcast on DAZN worldwide after the two-time heavyweight champ agrees to a groundbreaking deal. The global home of boxing. Eddie Hearn has confirmed that the Usyk versus Joshua rematch is not included in the <laughs> new DAZN deal. The Saudis own the global TV rights for Usyk and are now in negotiations. Why you have to, you have to understand, Steve, is I'm not involved in those negotiations. Okay, so I might have mentioned it before on the pod, but I'm not involved in those discussions. So, you know... I know what's going on, but I'm not going to tell you guys. So, you know, an announcement will be made, made soon. And then we'll make another announcement when the announcement is due time. to be made. <laughs> so. Hold and reply. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> By the way, can I just throw in Eddie as well for the... I think Rob mentioned the Baterbe fight. He's on, he's on that MMA hour where what did he call him again? Ariel Harwani. And Eddie's like giving it full fucking fork, fucking tongue talk, right? He's fucking... We'll do, we'll do a private bid and stream it for a... For fucking Bivol against um, Baterbev. You know, it's like, is he really having a fucking laugh here? But say, me and Bob will go into the room and we'll stream it and have a, a, a bit of a laugh. But Bob will tell him, go fuck yourself. You know, fucking hell, man. He needs to fucking go away. He's not with this fucking shit. How often have we kind of call for these type of things to go to push bids? Or go, sorry, go to push bids that then get streamed, for example. He's at it. He's completely at it. His, his legs are shaky at him at the moment because uh, that's a precarious fucking position for the future of the zone because the zone need an AJ win in this Uzik fight. And if he's not even the house fighter in the fucking, I don't know, like it's a fucking, you're relying on Canelo then and, and Triple G to prop up the fucking subscriber numbers. Like what, 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 honestly, with all jokes aside, what worth is there in an AJ long-term deal at the zone if he loses to Usyk. See, I'll be honest with you, I don't, I don't know if you remember we were talking, we were talking to Ben about it during the week. I, I'm starting to get a wee bit of fucking, wee bit of doubt about this fight now, actually, but Usyk getting a fair shake in the cards if it goes that far. I think Usyk needs a fucking knockout just to fucking make sure. The odds are tremendously close on this fight. It, yeah, it's it's kind of a shock. AJ's paying about plus 165 right now. It's, 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 it, considering what we saw in the first fight, um, it's oddly close. The zone's not long for this world, is it? I don't say that with any great joy. I'm not saying, oh, this is brilliant. The zone's gonna. It, it, it had a satan to feel from the start for me, even f right down to the colours. I, I don't know how much l legs it's got left in it, to be honest. Yeah, it's but, good that I kind of feel, mate. It's just you know the, when you have to change your model within what eighteen months of existence, whatever it is. And the thing is, you've got no other content as well. You look at the you need football on there, really. You need some sort of NFL, something else is going to draw in more viewers. They've got Women's Champions League, Ander. Oh, great, mate. Great. Fantastic. <laughs> I could probably stream that on YouTube or fuck off if I wanted to. See the, fucking hi see the highlights of the goals of the season for that are cracking at it. Yeah. <laughs> All the miss kicks and fucking people falling over. Fuck off. Um, keep, keep I was all for the zone the start, by the way. I mean, they just haven't delivered on what they said, and I, I don't know if Eddie's to blame for that or Golden Boy are to blame or whoever the fucking guy who's bankrolled them is to blame. But the, the concept of itself, the concept in itself would seem great. Six ninety nine, high def, couple of fights every week, big cards, stack cards, no fights for you if you're not one if you you know if you're not in the middleweight division. But they have they have they haven't delivered like the big what what's the biggest fight that's ever been on the zone? Exactly. <laughs> Probably was using Joshua fight on the zone first fight. Yep. No, no Sky, was it was it? Sky pay per view. <laughs> oh, was it? Was it Sky? Right. Okay. Sorry. Canelo yeah. had all those dopey fights on the zone, and then he went over to Showtime to unify the division event planned. Yeah. I think it was on the zone over here. 
in the league. You, you, probably, yeah. need, you probably need to go down, down the weight divisions, to be honest. We like something like maybe a Roman Gonzalez, possibly. Was there? A, was there? There wasn't. No, there could. There wasn't even like Super a big series. Um, was one of the Super Series finals known? Was it, was it Donair against the uh, Inouye? Exactly. So we're, mm. we're reaching to look for even a big fucking fight yeah. that's been on the zone, and it's been around now nearly two years. Like it's not, it's not going to work, man. Fucking give it up. MB says Canelo Triple G. He must mean the third one. I'm sure the other yeah. two are both on HBO. Well, yeah, they were. They were. I'm pretty sure they were. HBO, man. Those were the days. I remember them. It might remember. honestly be Taylor versus Serrano. Oh, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <me>. <laughs> it might be. Might be. I tell you, it be. Eddie needs to go big dog bollocks and go and sign Gervonta, by the way. Uh, he needs to try looking, and sign him anyway, doesn't he? Yeah, definitely he needs a star. Like. I was looking Is at his uh, figures. Apparently, he's only done 900 comps for his last fight against Romero. So that's fucking good going, considering that Eddie's fucking dishing them out like candy. Gervonta will never sign with Eddie, I don't nah, think. Nah, I don't think so. so. Oh, there's double wellings coming at you. I'd have to mute Rob just a second there as we go on to the next one, trading another boxing. Anthony Yard with some casual sexual harassment. Rongans in the camps is trading leather boxing. Anthony taking photos out on the streets. See through tights and white panties. Only in Ilford. I don't know where he posted that, but we'll screenshot it. Gotta be careful of that. That's Bacoli territory, you know. You gotta be careful what you're posting on. Fucking can't do that these days. Shame. Uh, Declan, my uh, dear friend Anthony Bellew has just picked Canelo to dominate Baturbiev. He then goes on to say, Plant is better than Baturbiev. Hashtag Bellew of the week. Yes, Declan, we can get on board with that one. Fuck off, man. <laughs> Holy fuck. It's Bell, you, Matty. Come on. That's... That's Bell fucked. Is, be, Bell, you is like the Johnny Nelson of the zone. Like, pure company, man. You know, like, but Nelson is for Sky. The only thing is you don't see as much of Bell, you, these days. Because he's on fucking Des on. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never see me again once I sign up for this business run through an app. That's Tone. Uh, Caleb Truax, he's always good value on Twitter. Chris Eubank Jr. says, planning that next move. Truax jumped in and said, waiting for the next notable welterweight to retire to call him out. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good laugh, Truax is. Uh, who we got here? Oh, Clarissa the Groat Shield. She's back in action again. Call whoever you want the Groat. This was in retaliation to people calling Savannah Marshall the Groat, or Katie Taylor even. Just know whoever you call in that can't whoop my ass, and I own Groat. So be careful before you get that paperwork from my lawyer. Better be careful, lads. Hashtag lawyer, hashtag Groat. Can't remember who nominated that, but I'll tell you what, the Groat's not messing around. Imagine being the fucking lawyer and she's she's folded up like if she want to fucking bring the case against Katie Taylor for calling herself the Groat. Okay, then. Ah, the growth. Get Jeffrey Benz on the case. Uh, Boxing UK uh, has been nominated. I think Andrew McCormick threw this one in. He was interviewing Cash Ali. Cash Ali, who's number 11 in the world, as Andrew pointed out earlier. I will be heavyweight world champion. Cash Ali promises that when he lands his shot, he will take it, whether it's against Fury, Usyk or AJ. I'll go from public enemy number one to superhero when I'm world champ, (laughs) says Cash. (laughs) (laughs) I'm liking him, Andy. Mate, he needs to get drug tested for fucking the them all <laughs> right now. He, I mean, he might be ranked 11th in the world, which he is, but one of the bodies, which is okay for him. But Yuzik Fury or AJ ain't looking at him at any time soon for any type of tune-up fight or easy defence, mate. So just uh, stay in your lane at this point, I would say. Stay in your lane. Highly ranked. Here's another one from you, Andy. You sent this to me. Couldn't get the video in time, unfortunately, but we did get the, the picture. Punch <laughs> Club teased a new format, Punch Form, on their Instagram. What are they? What is that? Like a shipping container? A uh, shipping container just like rigged up, mate, so it's like a few inches off the water <laughs> there. So the guys are throwing punches at each other, and uh, uh, you, you'll only lose if you get if you get punched off the sides. And uh, I think the guy that's been air there was the one that got, they got knocked off there. So I thought uh, that'd be good content for the zone, possibly, you know? It's like redneck yeah, sumo might... wrestling. <laughs> I don't know. Well, it, might actually... Actually, honestly. it could be good for the zone because it's, it's something that you want to actually see the result of. Oh, it's professional as well, mate. I mean, look at look at the referee. He's got a, he's got a dicky bow and a shirt. I love it. He's making a living container. <laughs> he should have a fucking life jacket, but he just came dressed in a tuxedo. <laughs> What's his name? Diamante did the fucking announcement, but he swam from the fucking uh, Egyptian Nile, didn't he? Just no, to no, get no, his no. pops up. No, no. He, he, he just he just swam the Nile, swam. And, he, he and did, then I swam he, from the Nile 
to the Red Sea, to the Mississippi to the shipping container, and here I am. And so then it popped up at a, fella, a fight where two fellas were fighting on top of a container, and the loser <laughs> went into the side of a fucking stream. Like, yeah, yeah, they're my day, yeah, sure. Can we, can we like, fly in mints? Yeah, okay, then. <laughs> Imagine you're signing up for the fight. You're one of the fighters, and you're like, fucking, this is, uh, this is a big deal. Is it? Yeah, yeah, pal, it's a big deal. You're going to get a lot of exposure. And it's, uh, it's on a streaming app. No, no. You're gonna happen to end up in a stream. It's not... <laughs> <laughs> this is like uh, Tucker Carlson's worst nightmare. It's 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 like uh, the worst replacement theory you can imagine. It's it's a future where they have said that white men can no longer earn a living, and they're forced to go out and box in international waters. <laughs> Where, where was it, Andy? Was it in? I don't show? know, mate. I can maybe do something under the bayou somewhere, possibly. Eh? Down by the bayou. But yeah. Listen, well, fucking was... listen, listen, MTK. You're not fooling anybody. If I see somebody on top of a fucking container, I know what's going on. All right. Uh, I know. What's inside there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I open up the container. Will it get to open the container? <laughs> <laughs> Full of fucking drugs, man. Oh dear. Uh, anyway, the, yeah, we're getting to the big one towards the end. A lot of people are throwing this in. No, someone, I put that in the chat actually, by the way. Sorry, fucking someone that said something similar. So, credit to the fellow who said that. I did come up with that one on my own, but uh, yeah, you can, you can share be the Be safe, Rob. Be safe. Yeah. Be safe. Uh, Shawnee Stevo, do you lads know anyone that does wheel locks for Versace prams? As Mr. Fowler might need one in future. Seriously, so many questions on this. So, apparently. <laughs> Sorry, Fowler got the Versace pram, which is like worth about what one and a half grand or something. Andy, we worked out as yeah. outside Iceland, and he's been on a mad social media, liked by Shane McGuigan, no less, a social media rampage trying to get this back. There have been some good memes floating about, but this was my favorite one here. Done by Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, bastards. Yeah, fucking bastards. Who did that? <laughs> Fowler had this photo taken though, like like a local newspaper when they've done, they're doing they're running a story, like a He's local mob. <laughs> oh, remind me. Actually, remind me off here to tell you a good one. <laughs> I can't. Fuck, I'd love to tell it on here. The thing is, he said things like Iceland. Was it? Was it? Was it? Was it? Was it, was it, was it we called again? But the oh, what do you call it? Home bins, whatever it was called. The fucking off license. We were kicking about with Versace Pram. I'm surprised he never came out of the fucking shop. And the Versace Pram was sitting on a fucking pile of bricks with the people's going on it, you know? <laughs> a lot of fucking money in the CBD, isn't it? Versace Pram? What's wrong with a fucking just an old Benetton job or something? Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. Standing outside Iceland, there he is, in his flip flops. <laughs> you know, for a pair of shoes. <laughs> Fucking what's the bay? He's like, oh, I can't believe someone stole me for me, me, me Versace Pram and my baby's Rolex. Whoever, <laughs> whoever did this is dead. As Danny Young says in the chat there, by the way, who the fuck takes a baby out of the pram, leaves it outside, and expects it to come back again? You usually, if you go to shop, you usually have the kid in the fucking pram. Or if you're out for a walk, at least, if you go to the car away, you just take the fucking kid out and just put the fucking thing in the trolley. Let it play about there amongst the messages. <laughs> What an half grand on a pram. Oh, my God. Anyway, there you go. I wonder if he was trolling eBay last night looking for the fucking thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's all the ones I've got, Andy. Any nominations on you, please? Yeah, you got a couple for Steve Bunce uh, for last night. Just saying, like, I think he, he mentioned uh, the Joshua Music fight, saying not only did I expect him to beat music, I expect him to beat him and style and look good doing it. So uh, maybe just keep a wee kind of like eye on that one. Uh, everyone said that uh, if he had Jaguar was the future of the heavyweight division. Steve Bunce again. I, I can't remember anybody saying that, unfortunately. Um, yeah, the zone for that pay-per-view, KSI trash. One for uh, Andy Cruz Jr. He's been caught trying to fucking escape Cuba, trying to defect. Serious indiscipline was actually cited, so uh, he maybe just uh, lost his career there, possibly. We'll wait and see. Um, oh, I one for Anthony Joshua as well. Gone by Robert Garcia. Now I can fully focus. No, sorry, sign him with uh, the zone. Sorry, now I can fully fully focus on giving the fans and the zone what they want. Knockouts in the glamour division. Excellent stuff. Uh, Robert Garcia for saying, you know, what's the game? We get asked the question. What's the game plan for uh, the music rematch? He says, well, Joshua's got the height, he's got the reach, he's got the weight, and he's got the power. So that's a that's a good game plan, I think. Um. 
Oh, aye, one for IFL. I don't know if it's for IFL or for Coogan, actually, but they actually put out a tweet, I think it was yesterday, I think it was, asking, um, seen a massive happy birthday to Coogan Cassius. Box wouldn't be the same without you. What are your favourite Coogan Cassius moments over the last 12 years of IFL? Well, for me, it's, there's only one moment, and it's that time he shit his pants for Tommy on the podcast, you know. Never really come, never, never really came back with the same energy actually after Tommy put it on him. So um, one for one for Coogs, possibly there, and one for Sam Jones as well. The Zone put out a tweet stating who should Connor Ben fight next. He fucking put up a picture of Jaron Boots Ennis. Uh, so Sam Jones wants to see a fucking public execution there. Um, so I'm not for that one to be honest with you. So I, so I've got this week, mate. But Tony as well wasn't happy with that, was he? He jumped in on Sam Jones oh, regarding he? that, apparently, saying, why would you put them two together against each other? You need to build Conor Ben separately and make money. So basically, Tony's saying, we want to see Conor Ben in against no marks rather than fighting the best available right. challengers, which is similar, which is leading off the back of Tom Halton's question earlier, Andy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. It was, yeah, that's, that's a fair enough point. It was Tony, sorry, Anthony was probably right with that one. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got, protect, you've got to protect your assets. Yeah, or protect your arse, basically, you know, for your employers. But it's just sad to see. It's just, you know, these, the, the, again, these networks are just getting, you know, splitting. We just mentioned Joe Parker, obviously, they're going for, you know, BT to Sky, scuppering that fight. Um, people are struggling, and the zone's just no any, no, no any better either. Absolutely. Yeah, Danny Young saying about the Andy Ruiz skinny legs photo with a little waist. I completely forgot to cut that one, Danny. I'll have to try and get that for next week if I can. People fly them into me all week and I just forget to forget to screenshot them, unfortunately, but it was quite a funny one. RIP Jason Chukwu. I haven't seen Jason Chukwu tonight, actually. Hopefully he's okay, Matty. More to the point. Never mind about Chukwu's longevity. What about your Bellew of the Week nominations? I, I do not think I can add anything this week, Steve. There, there are just uh, too many to choose already. Absolutely. Roberto, anything from you, please? Uh, I had one, but I forgot it. Uh, so, Ooh. nothing for me this week, Steve. Nothing from Rob this week. If it comes back to him, no doubt he can throw it in. Let's have a quick rundown before we take our picks. First of all, we had AJ talking about his first fight with Usyk. Then we had Tommy Fury blagging his pullout against Jake Paul, pretending he couldn't get into America. Then we had Frotch talking to Usyk. Usyk hadn't got a clue what he was talking about. Uh, we haven't got a clue what Derek's going to be talking about in a few years if they keep on wheeling him out. That's what he's going to end up like. Um, Conor Ben, retiring people, taking bodies on the record without even fighting them. Uh, Duran against Garcia, we went through that. We've got the Gad chasing ebbs around um, at the show at the weekend. we got Joe Joyce's commentary. We had uh, Jim White was nominated there. We also had Buncey getting nominated again. Andy nominated Buncey too. We've got a zone. All the big fights, apart from the big fights, are on the zone. We've got Anthony Yard shaming some poor lady in the street. We've got Anthony Bellew shaming himself. We've got Chris Eubank being shamed by Caleb Truax. We've got the Gwote getting all legal. Cash Ali, he's not biting people anymore, but he wants a world title shot. We've got the world-class cage fighting containers. And finally, <laughs> Anthony Fowler getting his palm stolen outside Iceland. And all the joy that he's brought people over social media. Quite the rundown, Andy. Who are you going to go for this week? Oh, it's, it's, it's a decent <laughs> week this week, mate, to be honest with you. I, I, I do like uh, the IFL comment, to be honest with you. Um, obviously, Joshua as well. He'll promise the big things for the zone and then maybe no end up on the zone. But I, I don't want to do it, but I've got to, I got to vote for Anthony, Anthony Fowler. That's... Um, look, it's a bad thing it's happened, right? It's a good thing a kid wasn't in it, obviously, but who the fuck posts a picture of themselves holding their kid with a fucking droopy looking face on after getting something nicked? Because I ain't, I'm away looking for the fucking thing. Or I'm actually knocking doors to find out where the fuck did it go? That type of shit. You know, no fucking taking pictures and post it on social media for fuck's sake. Obviously, so, what's he doing when doing thinking anything, leaving anything with wheels on it outside of fucking anywhere in Liverpool, let alone a fucking Versace fucking pram? What's wrong with him? Like, he lives there, doesn't he? Fuck's sake. Do you expect? As I was saying, I'm surprised he was just sitting on eBay that whole fucking night trying to find the fucking thing again for like 200 quid or something. That's like, there's that of his well. brilliant. Fuck's sake. Uh, yeah, Matty, it's got to be Fowler for me. That's two for Ant. Who are you going for? I got to go against you guys, and I, I'm going for the battle on the river that I'm going to dub uh, Huckleberry Fist 1. <laughs> Huckleberry Fist? I had to, uh, what, chicks with dig? We could be, what is it? What? <laughs> 
We're actually, uh, I'm actually going to try to get one in this Saturday. Uh, it's been a little light in the action, but there should be enough to talk about by this point in time. So, now you're dropping, you're dropping the ball, Matty. There's a guy that, that that fights on that format and can't be knocked out, and his name is Huckleberry Chin. You're fine. <laughs> 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 and I, and, and uh, to make, look, I tell you what, right? I'd be fucking. You're never going to sell BKB. They keep trying to fucking repackage bare knuckle boxing and make it interesting. You're not going to do it. But if you fill that fucking river full of crocodiles, the zone. You know, you're struggling for numbers, baby. There's going to be no fights for you unless you want to fight a fucking <laughs> fight to the death and possibly be eaten by crocodiles like some kind of James Bond villain. So I, I want to see that. Like, let's make that happen. Shipping container for Matty. Two for fouls for me and Andy. The decision is yours, Rob. You could make or break this week. Uh, look, the, I think the fucking the, the fight on the container. <laughs> who fucking drew that up? Like, who came up with that to get the two fucking fellas? It reminds me of, like... I don't want to go down this fucking rabbit hole. Let's, I'll tell you off here. But, <laughs> but let's, let, let's go for Felder. Let's go for Felder and, and have a nice fucking hat trick for Felder there. One, two, three for him. Uh, the over under Felder wins where the bookies draw the line. <laughs> Tanny Young says, forget punches in the pat from the past. It's punches on the pond. <laughs> <laughs> you know what we should do, actually? You should have up higher, this, mate. But I've, is this I've, fight I've, on Sky, mate? No, it's in the river. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't buy the, room. the thing is, you should, you should take that, you should hold it down at the Everglades. That's what you should fucking do. Right? So the loser then, but he gets put in the water, he's going to get the fuck out rapid style, or what is he going to get eaten? You know, so that'd be a good, that'd be a good side bet for Matty to kind of bet on does he get out or does he know, or I mean, does he lose a leg or whatever, you know. Joe Kennedy says, I never said we wouldn't fight on shipping containers. <laughs> 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 you gotta learn how to read those contracts. <laughs> Does he, don't he, like what kind of uh, like seriously? What kind of a reputation must somebody have to like you can't find a venue and you're forced to fight on a fucking manufactured ring on a shipping container out in a pond or a river somewhere? Like what? What have you done that has forced you into this position? It's bad when the fucking ringside doctors are frogmen, you know? <laughs> it's just a scuba <laughs> dive into the river to fucking... <laughs> right, you, anyway. You need to dig up Steve Urban for the past to handle the crocodiles. <laughs> yeah, <it's... laughs> yeah, it's not salt water, so he should be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Damn beauty! Anyway, yeah, we loved the, the shipping containers, but congratulations, Anthony Fowler. You are the Bell of the Week for this week, episode 481.